Hey, what's going on, guys? Alex here, and we are going to be doing a countdown of the top 10 games of the decade. Now, this is a very objective list, and it could be seen differently by each person. I did not do all these games on my channel, but I love playing them on my own. Hopefully, by the end of the decade, I'll be able to get through all of these games. If the way I rank these games is not in the way you would rank these games, put down how you would rank these games in the comments. I think this is just the best way I can put this, and I love all these games. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys at number 10. First, we have Pokemon Leaf Green on the Game Boy Advance. I loved playing this game for a little bit, but I didn't get really that far in the 100% completion of the game without giving up. I found this game pretty tedious, and playing on the Game Boy Advance without the light-up screen in the back was very difficult and unbearably dark. But it was still a lot of fun to play. I could just never get past the Elite Four without getting bored at some point. And I'd recommend this to people who haven't played the early Pokemon games before and still love Pokemon, just not to people that haven't played Pokemon before, because this would not be a good experience for your first Pokemon game ever. Uh, sorry if you don't like that opinion, but it's just my opinion, so on to number 9. Next up we have Gary's Mod, otherwise known as Gmod. This is a very do whatever you want kind of game. Without any of the workshop stuff found on Steam, it's a very limited and boring game. Once you add all the mods and stuff, it's a lot of fun. While this game wasn't super fun that in the way that I recommend it to everyone or play it for hours on end, it's still something I play with friends every once in a while. So on to number eight. At number eight, we have The Last of Us. I didn't get to play this game that much, but when I did get to play it, I really enjoyed, I really just enjoyed the game. It was pretty as heck. And while it was a bit annoying to have to make stuff in order to use weapons and Molotovs, it made sense considering that this is an apocalypse of some kind and it, the game brought me so many emotions that just blew me away. I just really love playing it, and I will play it again soon on stream for you guys. Uh, on to number seven. Now, Doki Doki Literature Club is a trickster of a game. This game tricked people into thinking that it was like an anime game or a simple game where a bunch of teenagers try to write a bunch of crap and get more people into their club. Maybe there might be even a bit of love in there for everyone. Nah, but no. The game instead decided to act, let all hell break loose in Act 2. It was so weird to play, but I still love the game, despite the lull that was the first act. I would definitely play it again at some point, and I will this week, actually. <laughs> ah, jeez, this game is one hell hole. But, I guess on to number 6. <laughs> At number 6 we have Cuphead, and Cuphead is a BEA beautiful game. Its setting in the 1930s or 1940s really improved on the amazing concept it already had. The music is lovely to listen to, as you can hear right now, and the boss fights gave me a lot of trouble like nothing else before. Or at least until I played Dark Souls that is. Now this game gave me hell without remorse, but it was so fun to play, and I would not regret a second of it. So, on to number 5. At number 5, we have Undertale. Now we all know what this game is and how great it is. It brought pacifism into the mainstream and showed that the consequences of your actions do matter in games. The characters made me feel for them and love, and I loved every one of them. It specifically made me feel so bad during the genocide route that I almost just stopped doing it. And the music. My god, the music. It was beautiful and I still listen to it so often. But there's, uh, there's one song that uh, gave me a bad time. Bending the Ink Machine is at number 4, and this game was one hell of a ride. This game brought me fear, joy, and anger every single time I played it. There was one chapter that was kind of a lull when I had to do Alice Angel's chores for literally no reason, and I had no idea what the hell I was doing. But all in all, it's a great game, and I'll definitely play it again while reading those secret messages on the walls. At number three, we have... As you probably know, I've been playing FNAF recently, but this point-and-click horror game changed my opinion on how I feel about horror games and even how I play them. I was kind of a wuss before I played FNAF, and now I'm slightly less of a wuss while playing this game. And I guess I'll see you guys all at number two. Spider-Man PS4 is at number two, and this game was a blast to play. I really loved swinging around in New York City and the fighting was goddamn spectacular. The story was very involving and even made someone chop onions around me at the end. Cause I- cause I didn't cry. I didn't cry. Uh, I didn't. On to number one! And Minecraft is of 
course, at number one. This game's graphics may not look as great as many of the other games, without shaders at least, but the gameplay is a blast. It leaves so many possibilities for me to try out, and there is no right way to play, which just added to my enjoyment of the game. And you don't even have to go on a server to enjoy it. And I loved and still love playing this game so much, I would strongly recommend it to anyone who hasn't played this game yet, and you need to play this game ASAP. Just get 30 bucks out of your account and play it. But the only problem I have is, uh, while it does look very beautiful with shaders, once you take shaders off, it does not look nearly as good anymore. But, even without shaders, you can do anything you want to, and everything you want to. Mods specifically add so much to this game, because with mods you can have new minerals, make cars, and do so much more stuff. This game is so much fun, and if you haven't played it yet, you really should. Hey everyone, Future Alex here. Before you just click off and go to the next video, I wanted to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'll be streaming a little bit before the year and the decade ends, but I still wanted to let you guys know that you made my 2019 end a lot of fun, and I'm excited for the next decade. So, see ya!